Put that out of the box. And that's what she looks like. Pretty nice uh, unit. So we got the fuel selector. That would be gasoline. This would be propane, so we could insert our propane connection. Or if we want to run fuel, we can run fuel. Get the pull cord if we want to start with the pull cord. We have our choke. This is our on and off run switch. This is economy mode switch. You've got your RV plug, 30 amp. Uh, this turns on your power so that it's actually generating electricity for you. You got breakers for your 110s. These are for your connectors so you can run them in parallel. You got a ground in those two. And then you got a 12 volt plug, which is what that adapter is for. Uh, but because I've already purchased one of these and had to return it for a manufacturer defect, I know that I need to put oil in first of all and I need to connect the battery. So before I can do anything else, those two things have got to be done. So, the oil goes back here, back there. Go ahead and do that. Large Phillips screwdriver right here. And that pops off. Got a dipstick right down here. Here's the dipstick. is empty and this of course tells you to put 1030 weight in there. Grab some oil. So now we got to hook up the battery. This was not very fun on the last go around. They don't give you much room to work. Getting the wires connected. Battery is all the way down here in the back here. Again, big Phillips screwdriver. Maybe this one will be a little smoother than the other one was. Here, what you got is a small clip here, rubber band that holds the battery in place. And the battery, just right on out like that. You have your power and negative wires. Zip tied up there. Zip ties. Release those. And this is just a boot to help protect the terminals. I have these little covers over the terminals. Just a rubberish plastic deal. Got positive on the left, negative on the right. <clears throat> For this, get your clip back on. And we'll put the door back together.
Okay. That should be that. So all of the pre-stuff is done now at this point. It's got a nice little handle here. Although, it is a little short. And if you lift it up too high, it drags the bottom of the generator. Like that. So, the manual says to go ahead and plug this in first. So you flip this up to propane. Plug in your quick connect. Attach this to your tank. Turn the tank on. Then, we're going to want to make sure the electricity is off for a moment. Battery power. So this is the on-off. So we'll turn that on. We have battery. That's good. Turn the machine on. We need to choke it. And we'll start her up. feet away and it's at 78 decibels according to my free uh, iPhone decibel meter so we're on the exhaust side now and we'll back up and so back here at about 20 feet we're at 69 decibels So on the front side of it, at about an equal distance, we're at 64 decibels. Roughly 64 decibels. And again, that's economy mode with just a fan running. So now, if we turn this thing up, get some heat rolling. You can hear that it had to kick itself up a little bit. I'd love to handle that extra draw on the generator. So with that kicked up and the heater actually running now, we'll go back and see what our decibel reading is back here. Again, this is probably about 20 feet away. 
25 feet maybe on the front side. And you can see we're at 68. 68 decibels on my free iPhone app for what that's worth. So the thing a lot of people I've seen in videos have trouble with is uh, shutting this off on propane mode. The only way to really do it, from what everybody is saying, is to turn the tank off. So that shuts off the power. That shuts off the generator on gas, but as you can see, it's not doing anything with the propane going. So what we actually need to do is turn the propane off. And she'll die down. So what are some of the pros of this generator? Well, it's small, compact, weighs 108 pounds. Runs off of propane or gasoline. Has a 30 amp RV plug already on it, so no adapter cords, none of that business. It's got wheels, it's got a tow handle, so you can move it around pretty easily. You can lift it by yourself. Two people can lift it a lot better. It's got two 110 outlets. It's got a cigarette lighter 12 volt adapter in the front that comes with a plug for uh, two USB plugs. Works pretty nice. Uh, it's based on the Honda engine, so it's Chinese made, but they take the Honda engine and basically uh, build it off of those schematics, throw it in this thing. It's very quiet. Uh, as we saw, it's uh, not loud at all. It's got an economy mode to save fuel, so it won't uh, rev up all the way if it doesn't need to. seems to adjust pretty well to different loads as far as adjusting the idle. Yeah, it looks pretty decent. What are some of the negatives? Well, it is 109 pounds. Uh, so it's a little heavy for one person. One person can handle it, but it's a little heavy for one person. It's much more suited for two, I think. Well, that could be a good thing too also, I suppose, because it's gonna be awful hard to grab it and run away with it. Unlike the little suitcase generators you see that are 40, 50 pounds, one guy can grab that and take off pretty quick, pretty quietly. A little harder with this. <clears throat> Other than that, I don't see a real negative. Um, this thing's about half the cost of the Honda or Yamaha. Puts out twice the wattage. It should run your AC and your travel trailer or camper. Uh, it definitely will run everything else in there. You should be able to run your television if you want to watch some TV or do some cooking, coffee in the morning, those kinds of things. should handle that no problem. The AC and the microwave would be the two big ones. Uh, running those at the same time probably not going to work, but it'll get you through the day for sure. Did run for a fair amount of time on a small propane tank. The beauty of the propane is you can buy a bigger tank and get a lot more runtime. With the gasoline, you're limited to the size of the gas tank. It's a gravity feed carburetor. It's not got a pump, so there's not really a lot of way around that. Uh, increasing that tank size is uh, a little more difficult than just buying a propane tank. The other great thing about the propane is uh, you just run it out and put it away. It doesn't gum up your carburetor. You don't have to worry about ethanol in your fuel gumming up your carburetor or your jets or lines, any of that stuff. It's very clean, very easy. Uh, not a lot of winterization needed. So that's uh, another real big bonus for the propane. Uh, and most campers have those two big propane tanks on them. So you can tap into one of those with a quick connect line. And you've always got propane. Makes it very simple.